the curtain rises on Act Two of Surrender is Farewell, starring Gloria de Haven as Carol. Although her hand is trembling and her eyes are misty with tears, Carol forces herself to go on with her letter, the personal account of a woman's struggle for happiness. I should have known better than to try and fight you, Linda. I didn't have your weapons. Your control over Roger's life had its roots in years of dominance. My power lay only in my love. And so the days slid into weeks, and everyone brought with it new humiliations. I remember one evening two weeks ago. Roger. Yes, yes, what is it, Linda? You'll be happy to know that I found those gray suede shoes of mine I was looking for this morning. That's fine, Linda. I'm glad to hear it. And I found them in Carol's closet. <laughs> Can you imagine it? Perhaps Carol could explain how... I can't stand it any longer. I can't go on like this. Carol, what's wrong? There's not a thing wrong with her, Roger. She's merely clamoring for attention. No, no, Roger. Look, I don't know what to do, darling. You've changed so much. I was wondering when you'd finally see it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Please, Carol. And you ask me what's wrong. Are you completely blind, Roger? Oh, Roger, don't listen to her. Believe me, I've tried to be a good wife. But what's the good of trying when she's living here? Carol, what are you saying? I'm saying that Linda's the one behind this. Yes, Roger, your precious sister, Linda. Linda? She deliberately set out to break up our marriage with her lies and her implications and her tricks. Roger, are you going to sit by and permit her to talk about your own sister like that? But it's true, and you can't deny it, Linda. But she's my sister, Carol. I... Yes, yes, and I'm your wife. That is, if you call this state of an existence a marriage. I refuse to listen to any more. Are you coming, Roger? You go on up, Linda. I want to talk with Carol. Very well. Good night, Roger. Oh, Roger, can't we get away from here? Can't we just start all over again? Darling, my, my business is here. I, I just can't walk out on Linda after all she's done for me. All right, then. If you won't walk out on Linda, I will. Oh, no. no you can't mean that, darling. What's the use of pretending? Look, I, I don't know what to say. I, I can't take much more of this. Maybe she was right. Maybe I am ruining your life. Oh. I get so confused. My head aches so... Roger, you're ill. No, I'm all right. Darling, let me feel your forehead. I tell you, I'm just tired. But you're, you're burning up with fever. I don't know what it is, but... And this strange feeling. Roger! Oh, darling! Oh, Roger. Carol, what have you done to him? He fainted. We must get a doctor. This is your fault, Carol. If you had Never, never mind that now, Linda. Can't you see he needs help? Well, he's resting quietly now, but we won't be able to make a definite diagnosis until morning. Is it serious, Doctor? It could very easily turn into pneumonia. He's apparently been under some great strain because his resistance is so very low. You can be sure, Doctor, that he'll get the very best of care here. Uh -huh. Well, I'll leave these pills with you, Mrs. Cameron. One moment, Doctor. I'll take those. But, uh... Well, well, all right. You have to watch him closely. If his temperature goes any higher, you call me. Then I'll stop by in the morning. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Well, are you satisfied, Carol? I hold you responsible for this. I want you to stay away from Roger while I nurse him back to health. You can't ask me to do that. Roger needs me. Oh, stop deluding yourself. I've tolerated a lot from you, Linda. I've taken your sarcasm and your humiliations and your cheap tricks. But I will not let you keep me away from Roger at a time like this. You'll do as I say, Carol. We'll see. I'm going into him now, and you can't. <gasps> and I'll slap you again if you persist in disobeying me. During the next two days, you never left Roger's bedside, blocking me whenever I tried to see him. For the first time, I began to doubt myself. Was it true that Roger no longer needed me? On the third evening, we had our first hope that he might recover. It was a black, stormy night, and we were just starting up the stairs to Roger's room. Carol! Linda! Uh, what is it? Oh, I, I don't know. I... Thought for a moment I was going to faint. Oh, and it's no wonder. You haven't slept for two nights. Oh, that pain. It cuts right across my eyes. You've worked until you're ill. I'm going to put you to bed. No. No, I must go to Roger. Don't worry about that. I'll take you to your room, and then, then we'll call the doctor. Come on. 
Oh, I'm so tired. So very tired. Just, just a few more steps, and we'll be at the top. Oh, wait. Wait. Let me rest a minute. There. Just lean against me. Oh, Carol. Don't let me fall. Fall? You would fall if I let go. An accident. Come on, Linda. Oh, Roger, his medicine. I'll take care of that. You're going to your room. Yes. Yes, you take care of it, Carol. Here we are. Now, now try to stand while I open the door. All right. There. Mm. Over to the bed now. Oh, I want to sleep. You're going to be all right. Hello? Operator? Operator? Operator! Oh. Linda, the storm must have blown the lines down. I'm going out to get the doctor. But you can't drive in I this... can walk. It's only two miles. I ran down the stairs, put on my coat, and started out the door. Then I realized I was the only one. The only one who could help you. No one would ever blame me if I didn't go out on a night like that. It was my one chance to get you out of my life. My one chance for a happy marriage with Roger. Why should I sacrifice my whole future for a person who had given me nothing, nothing but pain? I hesitated a moment longer. And then I made my decision. <laughs> She's going to be all right, Mrs. Cameron. But if you hadn't come for me when you did, she might not have lasted until morning. Yes, Doctor. I know. Well, you better get to bed yourself, young lady. Running around in that storm couldn't have done you any good. No. No, I'm all right. How's Roger? Completely out of danger. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> well, I'll be running along. I, uh, I hope your sister-in-law realizes she owes her life to what you did tonight. I should have known, Linda, that nothing could ever straighten out that strange warp in your mind. But I did hope. I hoped and prayed that things would be different. Only to have those hopes smashed when I overheard you and Roger talking this afternoon. But you simply can't be serious about this, Linda. Not after what's happened. We shouldn't have waited this long. If you weren't such an idealist, you'd understand. Well, I don't understand. I simply don't understand why the two of you can't live together in the same house. You know how it's been since the day Carol arrived. I tell you, the situation is impossible. But it isn't fair of you to expect me to treat somebody I love in that fashion. My mind's made up. Do you want me to tell Carol? I, I don't know. I don't know what you'll think. That makes no difference. This is for your own good, Roger. <laughs> I turned away then and walked slowly to my room. There was a, a hard, choking lump in my throat, and I suddenly wanted to rush screaming from the house. But I didn't. I left very calmly and quietly. So quietly that even as I write this, you probably don't know I've gone. Yes. Yes, I've given up the fight, Linda. And my surrender is farewell. Oh, Roger. Roger, darling. Hello, Roger, what, what are you doing here? When I found your clothes gone, I figured you'd be here at the station. Oh, Carol, please, please come home with me. No, Roger, I can never go back. But why, darling, why are you running away? It will always be the same in that house, Roger. Oh, once I hoped, I hoped that Linda would change. But then I heard the two of you talking this afternoon. I was going to tell you about that. You don't have to now. But I, I still can't understand why you feel that you must leave just because Linda's leaving. Because Linda's leaving? But I thought... It seems that Linda's done a lot of thinking since the night of her collapse. Now she has the idea it would be better for us if she left. I, I just can't believe it. Well, naturally, I was upset. She's my sister, and I, I, I do love her. She said her mind was made up. Oh, Roger... Carol, darling, will you come home with me, please? Yes, darling, I will. I will. Oh, I love you. You know, Linda wanted to see you before she left. Maybe, maybe I misjudged Linda. Maybe we could be friends. 
Darling, I was hoping you'd say that. Let's hurry, darling. Yes, yes, of course. I'll take your bags, darling. I... <laughs> what's, what's that you've been writing there? Here? Oh, uh, nothing, Roger. Nothing at all. I was just doodling. <laughs> The curtain falls in the final act of Surrender is Farewell. Our star, Gloria DeHaven, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. High school graduates, now that you're leaving high school, aren't you going to kind of miss it? Or are you anxious to get started in a career? Well, either way, the U.S. Army has a great offer for you. You can continue your education in the Army while preparing yourself for a worthwhile career in service or in civilian life later. Yes, there are plenty of opportunities for education through the Armed Forces Institute or the many other available facilities. At the same time, you'll receive a vocational training worth thousands of dollars and will be paid for it at the same time. And here's a special offer just for you high school graduates. You can select the type of training you want even before you enlist. That's right. You aren't required to enlist until you have been accepted for the Army Technical School of your choice. Get complete details at your nearest recruiting station right away. And now, back at the microphone, our star, Gloria DeHaven, and our producer. We bring our star, Gloria DeHaven, before the footlights for a well-deserved curtain call. I want you to meet her as she is in real life, the mother of two wonderful children, the wife of John Payne, and a very busy motion picture star. One can be very busy with just two children, especially now at their ages, C.P. Uh, let's see. Kathy's about two and a half now, and Tommy's about four months. Yes, that's right. And little Kathy is already a ham. That's tradition setting in, Gloria. You mean? With distinguished grandparents who trod the boards to fame, and two wonderful parents, both stars in their own rights, the theater is their heritage. Well, whether they go into show business or not, they both love an audience. I know, Gloria. The audiences love you and John. I suppose both of you have been busy at your studios. Yes, we have. John has just completed the charming Matt Saxon at Universal International and is already at work on another. And you have finished summer holiday at Metro Golden Mare. All wrapped up and ready for release. <laughs> you know, CP, there are so many fine stories being made or getting ready for production that we really look forward to each new picture. I believe, too, that theater goers are finding it true that better pictures are being released daily. And that makes us happy. It has all to do with our future outlook, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, Gloria, thanks for being with us. And speaking of pictures, what does your next radio production have in store for us, C.P.? Next week we present Richard Conti, who stars in a fast-moving comedy, Marry Me Not. It's a story about a wealthy bachelor who would rather gamble his chances against a forest fire than a designing woman. Oh, he'll be wonderful in the part. I'll be listening. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Gloria. Thanks for joining us. Join us next week, won't you, ladies and gentlemen, when we present Richard Conti in a comedy titled Marry Me Not. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> to the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Story by Harry Trelleban, Jr., with orchestra under the direction of Eddie Scrivano. This program is rebroadcast to the armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, Proudly We Hail next time presents Richard Conte. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>